I know sustainable living gets a bad rep for being expensive, which hasn't personally been my experience, but I figured today we'd put it to the test with groceries specifically. Basically what I'm gonna do is take you along grocery shopping and we'll compare the things that are like fair trade or B certified corporations or unpackaged produce, bulk bins versus packaged, and we'll see which of those things are more expensive compared to like the more wasteful or maybe less eco-friendly counterpart. And realistically, there are so many things to consider when we talk about groceries, because it's not all just about plastic, right? We also need to consider how the workers are treated, if people were exploited along the process. Is it local? Is it ethically farmed? Is it sustainably sourced? Is it packaged in plastic? Is it out of season? How is it put away now? Et cetera, et cetera. And to that I say, do your best and advocate for the rest, literally. With what information you have and what you have available to you, make the decisions that you think are the best. And for the rest of it, make sure that you are active in voting for people who will put things into place that will make that process easier because we're basically fighting against the system right now. And write to businesses and ask them about their practices and tell them what you'd rather see them do. Not putting all that pressure on yourself because realistically you're just subjected to what's available to you. So today I'm gonna look at things that are packaged versus unpackaged, which is not the definition of sustainability. I just wanna say that right now. Like I said, there's so much more to it. You're not supposed to be here, you know that. Hey, don't knock that over. Keep it going, keep it moving, keep it moving. And while we're on the topic of money and how we spend it, I think we should also keep in mind how we store it because oftentimes that can have an even bigger impact than where we're spending it. Considering many of the world's largest banks have put billions of dollars into fossil fuel expansion since the Paris Climate Agreement probably have a bigger impact than the bananas we buy. But there is so much more to pay attention to than just what we're spending our money on, like where we store our money, which is why I'm really excited that this video is sponsored by Aspiration. If you've never heard me talk about Aspiration before, they are a banking alternative that never invests your money into fossil fuels and some other awful industries like weapon manufacturing and private prisons. They never do that stuff. And in this video specifically, I'm very excited because they are launching a credit card called Aspiration Zero. There are no other eco-friendly credit cards on the market that I'm aware of at all, so this is very exciting to me. Because for me, switching to Aspiration was more sustainable just in doing that and where I'm putting my money and who's holding my money and all of that is like a more sustainable option. But on top of that, fighting climate change with a new credit card is even easier because every time you swipe your card, they plant a tree. And in a month, if you get 60 trees, you'll reach carbon zero, which means Aspiration will give you 1% back on all of your purchases. And if you don't quite reach carbon zero, Aspiration will still give you 0.5% of all your purchases back. Plus, if you sign up with my link on the screen and at the top of the description, you'll get $300 as a bonus when you spend $3,000 in the first three months or 90 days. So to apply for Aspiration Zero and to get that $300 bonus, make sure you go to the link, like I said, on the screen or in the description. And huge shout out to Aspiration for sponsoring this video. Now, now we're going to head to the grocery store because I live in Texas and they're not walkable. Here we go. service charge you know and I'm gonna do my best with what's available to not compare like organic to non-organic those are kind of my intentions let's see what we can do
it's kind of hard to talk in here over the music and with a mask on, um, but no one's around, so I just wanted to say that the consensus on the produce is that yeah, it's more expensive when it's unpackaged. We'll talk more about that when we get home, but I'm really interested to know if when I buy like dry goods in bulk with no packaging, if that's more expensive than when it's packaged. So let's look at the package stuff first, and then we'll go back to the bulk section because they were like cleaning them right now. Let's go see. Most of the beans on the bean aisle are in a box or like a can, but I'm looking for dry and I only saw a couple, like there's one here and there's one here and one is organic and one is not. So I guess I'll write down these prices and we can compare it to the bulk prices. working in the bulk section so I told her I was making this for my video and that I was just trying to compare prices and she was like no problem if I'm in your way let me know um, so now I don't feel so nervous filming but I got the prices while I was over there for kidney beans rice oats and granola all things I buy from there very often and definitely what I've noticed already with the beans and with the rice is it is cheaper in bulk but I'm gonna go find the same granola and the same oats in the store and see if it's cheaper over there as well. And then I'm gonna check out and we'll wrap this up once we get home. Also, I don't know if you can hear this, but Shania Twain is playing in here and I'm here for that. <laughs> was nice while it lasted but this is Texas and it's almost noon so it's enough of that while I was at the store I needed to pick up a few things and I'm trying this app right now that gives you like cash back when you purchase like sustainable from sustainable brands so I'm gonna do that and if you want to learn more about that you can go follow me on the gram because I'll be talking more about that later but what I want to talk about right now is obviously the price of this stuff I would love to hear in the comments if you have personally found that shopping more sustainable, eco-friendly, ethical, all those sort of things, specifically with groceries, if it's been more expensive. Because overall, for me, living a sustainable lifestyle means buying less. Please pause for the cat. For me overall, it saved me a lot of money from the way I used to spend money because I used to just spend all of my money on clothing. If I had any money, that's what I would do. I would just go buy more and more and more. Um, and ever since I obviously live a sustainable lifestyle, I don't do that. When I do buy things like clothing, home decor, stuff, you know, things that come into your house, I try to always buy them secondhand. I've gotten a lot of things on my no buy page. Um, and that really is like the reason that I've saved so much money sustainable living compared to, you know, prior to sustainable living. But when it comes to food, I can completely see how depending on the way you were shopping and the way that you will be shopping uh, when you're shopping more sustainably can be more expensive. And like we saw today, pretty much always whenever you're buying food without plastic, it is more expensive than with the plastic. Now I think a lot of that is because it's a bulk bag and typically when you buy things in larger quantities, it's cheaper, we all know this, but it sucks that if you wanna get the same amount that's in that bulk bag but without plastic, you're gonna be spending more for the exact same thing. I know a lot of people also are really lucky enough to have clearance sections at their grocery store. So basically when produce is about to go bad, otherwise it would be thrown out. They put it on like the clearance rack for super discount. When I lived in my college town, I knew a grocery store that did that. But here, I don't know any grocery stores that do that. There are a couple other stores that I've learned about recently that I think I'm gonna experiment with. So if you don't follow me, I'm not trying to make you follow me everywhere. But also like if you want to, I wouldn't be mad. But if you wanna see more of that, I think we'll try to do that adventure over on the vlog channel. So I'll link it up there for you. So produce, I think is more expensive when it's at least package free. I think it's also more expensive when it's things like ethically grown and locally grown and organic, all of those things are more expensive. For me, I've always felt like that's okay. My mom would always tell me, no, we can't buy the thing from the farmer's market. 
the organic thing, the unpackaged thing, the whatever the fuck, because it's more expensive. And I would always be so frustrated because it's not like we didn't have disposable income. It's not like we were hurting financially. We had the money to spend on those things, but instead she spent it on other things that are just frivolous, really. So we had the money to buy the more sustainable option, but instead she chose to spend that in areas that you don't need. And so once I started buying my own groceries, my thought process was always the only thing we actually need to buy other than like obviously rent and bills is food. And so if there's anywhere I'm going to spend the extra money I do have, that's where it's going to be, especially because it's something that I buy so often. Like we all have to buy food often and so if i have the ability to make better choices on a daily basis like that i'm gonna do it but that's just me and i'd love to hear your experience so produce more expensive dry goods cheaper across the board but the rice that was the exact same brand it was the exact same rice in plastic for two pounds or you could get it package free in bulk uh in a package it was 350 per pound and package free it was 279. i was happy to see that and then the granola and the kidney beans and the oats, all the same situation. More expensive to buy it in packaging than package free in bulk. And to me, I hope that for a lot of people that evens out. And I know there are a lot of things that you can't get in bulk, obviously, that we need to buy from the grocery store. Like, what did I buy? I bought some bagels. Let me, let me be transparent. I bought some bagels in plastic, okay? <laughs> they don't have the little like plastic free like section where you can just like get it yourself right now because of covid they had it and then they took it away again so that's a bummer but i could get these without plastic before just put them in my own bag but i can't do that right now so things like this kind of impossible to get package free and i always want to walk that line of being like i'm not perfect but also let's do what we can which is why like my spinach has no packaging the bananas have no packaging like doing the things that we can and not getting too caught up in the things that we can't I think is the key right now. And to me, I'm caring so much more about things than packaging, like building community and doing different things in my community to make things better and advocating for policy change and all those sort of things are really much more important to me right now than worrying about this plastic bag, which likely will be reused anyway. So overall, do I think sustainable grocery shopping is more expensive? I do, but I also think that it's important to acknowledge why that is. And in many ways, it's because brands that do things in a really unethical and unsustainable way are exploiting people and the planet along the way to make those things cheaper. And I think at the end of the day, if you have the privilege to be able to afford the things that are better and not exploiting people and the planet, you should do so. And if you don't have the ability to do that, you should never feel guilty about it. I think at the end of the day, that is the answer. And I think above that, it's like we shouldn't focus so much on what we can do because we can only do what, enough of with what we have access to and blame the people who make this the system that we live under instead of blaming me for buying bagels in a plastic bag. So I hope this video taught you something. If you want this to become a series on my channel at like different grocery stores, that could be interesting. I only know a couple other places that have like bulk and non-bulk stuff, but maybe we can figure it out. If you've never seen my series where I go into like big chain grocery stores and see what you can even get zero waste, you can check out that series. I'll link it up here. So yeah, thanks again to Aspiration for sponsoring this video. Like I said, if you guys wanna get that $300 sign up bonus, link on the screen and at the top of the description. And remember, until next time, you cannot do all the good that the world needs, but the world needs all the good that you can do. Bye guys.